is Ukraine's ambassador to the United Kingdom, Vadim Prysnyko. Uh, thank you very much indeed uh, for being with us. What do you believe uh, Russia and President Putin's intention is towards your country with this military build-up? Good morning. Uh, there are many, many explanations of what has been done right now. Uh, somebody is arguing that Putin is sending the signal to the new U.S. administration. Somebody else is saying that the time for war in this part of the globe after the, after the long winter is coming and he might snatch this opportunity. Somebody else will remind us that they will have the, this year elections to their parliament, which all of them are options, but what we see right now when we're worrying right now is the buildup of military you mentioned both in Crimea, which is south of Ukraine, around 30,000 people, as you mentioned, and some 50 plus in next to our borders on the east of Ukraine. There is dead dangerous escalation and we would like to de-escalate immediately. We welcome this telephone conversation which happened yesterday between President Biden and President Putin, inviting each other for the third nation somewhere to sit and discuss. And we hope that this will allow to de-escalate the, the, whole, the whole tension right now. Do you think there is a real intention to take more Ukrainian territory for Russia, as has already happened uh, with uh, the Crimea and, of course, in, in the Donbass region, uh, there is a certain amount of occupation? Do you think that is the ultimate intention? Seven percent of our territory is already occupied. A couple of million people in these regions were occupied, both in Crimea and east of Ukraine. Seven million people used to live there, but now 1.5 million are refugees, internal refugees in Ukraine. We managed to keep them inside, not to add up to the even bigger problem in Europe with the, with the Syrian uh, refugees. So there is a danger that they will move further. And what, what worried me personally, that recently Minister of Foreign Affairs Lavrov and some people from the president's office of the, uh, uh, Putin started to mention words like Ukrainian statehood. So they told if Ukraine is going with what they're doing right now, their statehood is in danger. This is a very, very serious allegation. That's a very serious message. I believe that our Western partners also understand the gravity of this new sort of wording. Well, that, I wanted to go on to that because, as you say, there was this uh, phone call with uh, Biden and Putin yesterday. There was also uh, visits at, the, at NATO and uh, contacts with the American Secretary of State. What do you see, what do you think Britain and your other allies should be doing at this point? You're doing already enough at this particular moment when the forces are still build, being built up. We believe that there is not enough forces to attack Ukraine because our armed forces are getting better and better since 2000. 14, where they could not even resist this uh, annexation of Crimea and attempt to get even more territory in East Ukraine. So there is not enough at the moment, which we believe is a good point where everybody can sit back and start thinking in the more peaceful terms, reminding Putin that he's not easily achieving what he wants. Whatever he wants, a small victorious war for his internal reasons, or he is not happy with the progress being done in Ukraine, cracking down on these oligarchs close to him, on the TV channels and, 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 and the rest of the things we are doing right now. Or just he wants to, us to be more flexible in the negotiations we've been around for seven years. Whatever he is doing, I believe the good words from our partners and some actions, like two military ships from the United States are coming now with the Black Sea. Some uh, Air Force uh, pieces being moved closer to Ukrainian territory. People talking to their partners in the United, in the United States as well as Russia. NATO, At this moment, we still believe that uh, uh, NATO did decide that it uh, ten years or so ago that it wasn't going to admit Ukraine as a full member. Would Ukraine still actively be seeking a full membership of NATO? We are seeking. I used to be ambassador to NATO, and I know all the sorts of negotiations and all the sorts of wording from different nations. Some of the nations will be happy to see Ukraine. This is biggest by territory in Europe, so they understand the importance of such a, a future ally. Some of them will be threatened by the activities of Russians. They would rather stay away from allowing Ukraine to internalize. But at the end of the day, that's what Ukraine is presenting. That's a contribution which Ukraine can bring to the alliance, not just be a donor of the, of the uh, security. As you say, there's already uh, military occupation and military conflict uh, in Ukraine. What are the chances you think that this could develop into a major European land war? 
I hope that we, by joint efforts, we will be able to avert this. But you never know. Many people tried already to look into soul of, of or eyes of President Putin for quite a while, and so many people do not understand. We are no, we have been with them for ages. They are closest neighbors and, and brothers, and at least former brothers and sisters. And even us, we don't know how far he's eager to go, what his internal position is, what his internal politics dynamics is dictating him. We just hope that with enough resolve and, and posture, we can tell him that's not easy, a low hanging fruit. He has to take advantage of it. Ambassador, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us, the ambassador of Ukraine there.